This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. DOC, DPF, SCR, DEF, it all sounds kind of like an eye chart. What do you really know about your after treatment system? Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side is Matt Cole. An after treatment system's sole purpose is to reduce emissions from the engine, but all the action really takes place in the combustion chamber where fresh air meets diesel fuel and compression blows the whole mixture up to turn the crankshaft. That reaction, or the explosion, creates byproducts like nitrogen oxide, unburned hydrocarbons, and soot, or particulate matter. That's pretty much where the after treatment system comes into play. An engine without an aftertreatment would expel all these byproducts via black smoke. By 2007, with the ramping up of emissions policies nationwide, systems like EGR and injection timing couldn't keep up, and the aftertreatment system we know today was born and eventually mandated. The system itself is really just three parts, a DOC, DPF, and SCR, but Sean Whitaker, senior staff engineer for Chevron Lubricants, says the aftertreatment system is fairly complex because it performs a lot of jobs. There's several different types of emissions that are coming out of the engine itself. You've got uh, the nitrogen oxide, you've got that particulate matter, the smoke, you've got uh, products of partial combustion like um, carbon monoxide and and the the raw fuel itself. And so there's a a kind of a sequence of devices in in the exhaust system that is meant to kind of reduce all of these to levels that are uh, compliant with today's very demanding standards. On the front end of the system is the diesel oxidation catalyst, which helps reduce emissions by oxidizing unburned hydrocarbons and converts the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. It also plays a role in managing the temperature of the system, which helps manage the rest of the process downstream. The next thing that the exhaust sees is um, a very efficient device called a diesel particulate filter. Um, And and these are upwards of 99% efficient in reducing that smoke emission that um, had been long characterized through um, diesel exhaust and now is virtually absent from the the tailpipes of uh, modern diesel engines. It's actually a a fairly simple phenomenon, but it's actually complex in the way that it operates. So it's it's an actual filter. I mean, it is something that is Um, trapping that solid material that's in the exhaust. It's a kind of a porous membrane that traps the PM. And then when the the conditions are favorable and that and favorable usually means that you've got sufficient temperature in the exhaust, that trapped particulate matter burns off and becomes carbon dioxide and takes off down the tailpipe. Since the DPF is so efficient, Sean says it also grabs other things in the exhaust, like engine oil that's blown by the rings. There are certain components to the diesel engine oil that are incombustible, and namely the the metallic additives that we use. And so those end up in that DPF. And even though the the particulate matter gets burned, that uh, incombustible fraction of the engine oil will remain in the DPF Um, even after these so-called regeneration events, which burns off the uh, PM. The next thing downstream is the selective catalytic reduction catalyst, which reduces nitrogen oxide emissions, a key focus of pollutant emissions standards over the last 15 years. SCR is the component that requires DEF, a mixture of urea and water that prompts a reaction in the SCR. Diesel exhaust fluid is actually sprayed into the exhaust upstream of that SCR catalyst that urea breaks apart and forms um, ammonia is actually what uh, the catalyst requires then to uh, further reduce the the nitrogen oxides back to nitrogen and and then it gets released from the system. So really choreographing this whole um, complex system is, is really key at reducing these emissions to levels that are compliant with the standards and that don't otherwise interfere with the operation of the system. But it's also created through new maintenance requirements, new challenges for end users to keep these things healthy so that you can keep the truck on the road doing its job. Over the last 15 years or so, after treatment systems have become just one more thing to fix or another light on the dash to look at. But a fleet's relationship with its after treatment system doesn't have to be so adversarial. 
if you look for and heed the early warning signs. But before we hear what those are, let's hear from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. But Dello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. Truck owners and particularly drivers often operate by feel. And so there, there could be some things that um, the driver senses, it's the engines, maybe the truck is getting a little more sluggish isn't pulling hills as well. There's There might be a obvious decrease in the fuel economy of the engine. That these, these things might be sort of hints that there's something going on with the after treatment system that the engine and the vehicle don't like. Fuel economy does um, play a significant role here. I mean, and one of the things that, that we've learned about after treatment systems is there's, as I kind of mentioned earlier, there, there's fuel burned in an engine that is not just for use of making power, but is actually um, oftentimes used to uh, facilitate the uh, thermal management of the exhaust system because oftentimes we need hot exhaust in order to make those reactions and, and kind of facilitate the re reduction of the emissions that takes place in the emission control system. When the, the system starts to become less efficient, and one of the ways that can happen is through the accumulation of ash in the DPF. So over time, that consumed lube oil, that incombustible fraction can accumulate in the DPF, and a couple of things happen. Um, one is that that comes uh, kind of clogs the system. It becomes a, a back pressure that the engine itself has to overcome in order to push that exhaust gas out the tailpipe. Um, that in itself can provide that parasitic drag on the engine that increases fuel consumption, reduces fuel efficiency. The addition of the after treatment system to the truck prompted the evolution of just about everything that interacts with the engine, including oil and fuel. When we started using after treatment systems back in 2007, there was actually equal attention paid to not only the lube oil, but also fuel quality. Um, in, historically, diesel engines have been very robust to diesel fuel quality, and, and oftentimes it was even practiced to, to put things in the diesel fuel like mix in a little bit of used engine oil to burn it up or to use things that may have ha had some of these other contaminants. Um, that's a no-no these days, right? Because the, the system itself is can be very sensitive to the accumulation of sort of poisons that can be introduced through the fuel. And if you think about it, there's, there's a lot more fuel burned in an engine than there is lube oil. So even very trace amounts of these types of contaminants can um, be detrimental to the performance of the system. So certainly lube oil blending of the fuel um, can't happen in, a, in an after treatment equipped engine, but you also have to be kind of mindful of just general contaminants, um, keeping fuels clean. Um, so keeping them free of uh, just general dirt and debris can be um, very pivotal in today's engines for a variety of reasons. Um, biofuels, you, you need to be pay it particular attention to uh, biodiesel blends, which there's there are some contaminants left over from their manufacture that um, if you're getting off spec product um, could lead to accumulation of things like calcium and magnesium. Uh, uh, these, these are ash components as well. And uh, even just a little bit in the fuel can uh, accumulate in a, in a DPF very fast. Um, so it, I think it's really important to um, operate with clean fuel. And I think there, there's, there's actually ways today where you can get um, ultra low ash engine oils that have a significantly less 
um, the lower level of these uh, ash clogging materials that uh, can greatly extend the time interval between uh, DPF maintenance events or maybe even take it out of the equation altogether. Metallic additives in the engine oil are beneficial for the oil itself, neutralizing acids and providing wear protection, but they're responsible for upwards of 90% of what's being trapped in the DPF, a necessary evil of sorts. But Sean points out that there are formulations available, like Delo 600ADF, that produce less ash, thereby requiring less maintenance and maybe eliminating a DPF cleaning entirely. It's got 60% less of that ash um, that would otherwise clog the filters. And that has a tremendous advantage on operational and maintenance costs. It, by taking 60% of the ash out of the oil, oil, if you flip around the math, that translates into two and a half X increase in the maintenance interval that's required between these DPF cleanings. And with kind of nominal levels maybe being at the four or 500,000 mile mark these days, if you multiply that by two and a half times, you're probably um, taking it out of the equation altogether, upwards of a million to million and a half miles between um, these cleanings. But it, but it has that ancillary of, um, impact of helping kind of retain that fuel efficiency like when the engine was new. Um, and we found that, that that combination of factors is really the, the value proposition for using ultra low, low ash engine oils like Delo 600 ADF. The biggest disadvantage of a clog filter is that it requires a maintenance event, which is just downtime. And Sean says the process could take hours or days. There's a variety, variety of ways this can happen, but fundamentally the trucker engine has to be taken off the road um, it needs to be given time to cool because if it's been in operation, the exhaust system is um, oftentimes reasonably hot. It, it, this might take upwards of a day to allow it to cool off enough to be able to be um, safely handled. Uh, then that, that DPF is actually physically removed from the exhaust system. Um, it might, if the shop has the equipment on site that can be put in a, a system that blows the ash out. Um, that's one option. And then it can be put back on the, the truck and, and back on the road. Um, sometimes they, the fleet might be operating in the exchange system with their engine or truck builder in which the, they turn in that used DPF and get, re, get a replacement that's, that's put on the, the vehicle right away. But no matter what, you're taking a, the system out of service. It's not in revenue operation. There's costs involved one way or the other. Um, so that's that's the sort of the primary downside to having this this clogged filter. So there are a few different ways that you can sort of prolong the the time between these intervals. Is um, make sure you're using clean fuel, obviously. I mean, so that there, there's nothing that can more rapidly uh, trigger the um, accumulation of um, contaminants in a system than to have um, unclean fuel. Um, but from the lube oil side, I mean, you, you do have choices, right? And, and they're certainly making sure that you're using a modern oil that has lower ash content, ideally using something that has ultra low ash uh, because you, you're, you're actually um, tipping the equation in your favor by having less of that metallic additive in the engine oil itself. And so the accumulation rate in the exhaust is proportionally lower. Certainly keeping oil consumption under control by using reasonable um, engine oil uh, maintenance intervals so that the time between oil changes, keeping those sort of at a reasonable level can um, kind of keep the engine healthy and prevent the formation of deposits, which can trigger loss of oil consumption control that can also accelerate the process. So, so it's just the entirety of your maintenance system um, certainly can help improve uh, DPF function over time and in the long run, reduce your overall operation and maintenance costs. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com. And as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. And if you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. Until next week, everybody stay safe.